Good morning. It's, uh, oh, it's about quarter after nine on a beautiful Tuesday morning. I'm sitting here at Rotary Beach. I'm just going over the word. And I woke up this morning with this wonderful phrase, uh, a scripture on my mind. And it was uh, the scripture in Matthew 7, where it says, uh, Ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you. And for everyone that asks and uh, he receives and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And I really kind of like that scripture, but uh, when it goes on it says, for what man is there of you whom if his son asks for bread, he will give him a stone. And, or, or if he asks for fish, he'll give him a serpent, a serpent. Excuse me. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? I'm, um, when you dissect that a little bit, it's, it's pretty amazing how it, it, it doesn't kind of leave that hanging. It's talking about it says good things. And I guess we could make that fruit of the Spirit, like He gives us love and He gives us peace and He gives us joy. I guess you could do that. But isn't it funny He says bread and fish? He actually is talking about material substance. And I just love that about this particular verse. What's really great is that it, it does over in uh, Luke 11 it talks about this uh, uses the same uh, scripture I'm sure they're talking about the same conversation and it says or if he asks for an egg uh, will he offer him a scorpion <laughs> and if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall, shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. And I want you to know something. When we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, people freak out, they clam up. Just, you have to understand something. God's a God of relationship. Everything he ever did was to restore fellowship to man. Everything he ever did. I hear a motorcycle coming. I just hope it doesn't get too loud. There you go. Everything he ever did was to restore fellowship. When Adam fell, God wasn't angry at the sin because of Adam. He wasn't angry at Adam for sinning. He was angry at sin for breaking fellowship. He still loved Adam. He still attempted to have fellowship with Adam after that event. So we have to understand that when it talks about gifts, it's all about restoring and continuing fellowship and relationship. So spiritual gifts, don't, don't clam up. Don't go off into a town. Oh, what are the spiritual gifts about? No, 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 no. The main thing is the Holy Spirit. And he gave the Holy Spirit to dwell in us here on earth, to guide us, to give us wisdom. The Bible says that God will give us wisdom if we ask for it. Well, he does that through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's ministry is to convict us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That's not to condemn us, but that's to give us discernment about what's right and wrong. Many times the elements that we think are sin are just the accoutrements of wrong thinking. They're not. You know, rarely are people chasing sin for sin's sake. And so the key here is, is understanding that God wants to restore us to fellowship 24-7. That's his heart. That's the source of everything that he did was about restoring us to fellowship, not about destroying sin in our lives. Now. Like, like, I love the illustration of the rattlesnake. I'm gonna let this truck go by. I love the illustration of the rattlesnake. If you have a little two-year-old child sitting in the grass over there and you see a snake coming towards it, you hate that snake. You hate that snake more than anything. You're gonna, every, every, uh, 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 Every corpuscle in your whole body, every atom, every muscle, every sensitivity you're going to have is to save that child from that snake. And if it means destroying that snake in the process, you're going to be willing to do that. You have to understand that's how God sees sin. You don't yell at the baby 
because of the rattlesnake. You don't beat the baby. You don't chastise the baby. Even if the child gets older and is pursuing snakes, you're still going to warn and teach that child not to do that thing because of the dangers. But it's not about the snake. It's not about God isn't up in sin or heaven hating sin for sin's sake. He hates sin because of the break in fellowship that it causes. And when he nailed sin to the cross and we were crucified with him, that means we became dead to sin. Now, here's what I want you to do. So just stop thinking about sin. Stop thinking about it. Don't address it. Don't talk about it. When it happens in your life, the Bible says that if we'll confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. So stop being so sin conscious and start being redemption conscious and watch what happens. You'll start walking in the grace of God and you'll start becoming so sensitive to the Holy Spirit in your life. Your life will change. And that's what salvation is all about. How will it change? Your relationship with God will get deeper and deeper and more real and more joy filled. And so I'm here to tell you today that when you ask God for a, a, an egg, he's not gonna give you a scorpion. And when you ask him for bread, he's not gonna give you a rock. And when you ask him for a fish, he's not gonna give you a serpent. When you ask God for something uh, uh, of his presence, he's gonna give you the Holy Spirit. He's gonna give you good gifts and he's gonna give you that gift so that you can be closer to him. Stop being so sin conscious and ask God and walk in excited expectation that you're going to get those things because he said he's going to give them to you. Ask for wisdom. Walk with God every day. Stop being so sin conscious and watch your life change. My name is Randy. I pastor the uh, River Congregation Community of Believers. We meet at the high school at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Come on out here, rock and worship, hear the word of God and find some people just like yourself that love God. We're not religious, but we sure love God. I'll see you Sunday. Take care.